So about 18 months ago, I was partway through a master's degree in machine learning, and I decided to switch the note-taking system that I was using. And I think it had a massive impact. I think it was really helpful, both from the point of view of learning the content um, as I went through, organizing myself, and now also having a resource on all this content that I can refer to for the rest of my life. Um, so that's the system I wanted to share with you today. So the system involves firstly a central note where I have all of the different atomic educational units of this course that I was taking, this master's degree. And then that links away into the second part, which is these notes on each of these different educational materials. And then a layer on top of that, which combines all these different atomic notes, but groups them together by theme and puts them into a more natural topic-based format rather than just the format that they were covered in the course. Now, I appreciate that might be a little bit abstract, so let's go into the notes and actually uh, see what this looks like. Now, the specific note-taking tool that I use is called Obsidian. I think the exact software is not too important, but what is important is that it has the ability to do uh, bi-directional links between notes. So I used to make all my notes in OneNote, and what I found was tricky there is that everything was kind of in a hierarchy. You had to pick your, let's say, subject. So um, deep learning was one of my modules, then you had the lectures in that module, and then everything was kind of like embedded within that. Whereas the nice thing about bi-directional uh, linked notes is that you can link between notes, and that's kind of regardless of the hierarchy, and it makes a big difference. So for example, um, this, this is what a bi-directional note, note might look like. Here I have these kind of syntopical machine learning notes that I'll talk about a little bit later. And I can click on that and that takes me um, to this location and I can also then link back. So this one is called a uh, tracking completion of UCL uh, DSML. So let's say I made a note on this. I can click through to that and then I can go back to the syntopical notes. So everything is, is, is linked um, and that opens up I think the possibilities that I then kind of used um, to process my notes here. So this is, that's something helpful to be aware of. But I think the principles can apply for different um, note-taking systems. So it doesn't have to be Obsidian, it can be. I know Rome also has these linked notes and there's um, LogSec and there's various other different software that are popping up that enable this. Okay, so this is really kind of the home notes for all of the content that I covered during this course. And as you can see, um, these are the different modules that we had. And within each of these sections, I would then list out every single atomic unit of content that we would have. So let's say in week one, um, here we would have, so we had these two lectures, uh, which were, so introduction to RL, um, exploration and exploitation. We had an assignment, which was to read chapter two of this book um, by Sutton and Bartol about reinforcement learning. Uh, and likewise, you can see here, week two, week three, week four, every week we typically had about two lectures and maybe some chapter reading. So. I use this high level note for all of my subjects just to coordinate what do I need to do, what do I need to process what's been done. Um, and here I have, you can see obviously I've ticked things. Uh, when I was working through it, this would have been unticked. And this was nice because this is just one central document that I can come to. I can scroll down and I can see all of the different subjects and all the things I should do. So every week when I was processing, um, when, when I was learning my material, I can see the different uh, topics, the different bullet points. Um, and whichever ones are open are things that I need to do next and then kind of prioritize and structure my work accordingly. And you'll also see that I make notes on uh, some of the kind of like high level sentiments around these different um, topics. So as I'm going through things, I might just drop some notes. Okay, week one, relatively happy with this content. So then if I come back to this note later, I can see, well, uh, you know, maybe I don't need to rewatch this material, um, but I have this note here that I can then see my own personal summary as required. And then I also, as I've transitioned more towards the exam term, I incorporated notes on exam completion and uh, also without the term any assignments that I had. So here we have uh, exam completion. So SDS was one of my modules, uh, statistical data science, and I could track the different exam boards, uh, the, sorry, the different exam papers. Um, and here, yeah, I would print out the papers and, uh, you know, kind of make my notes and, and my answers here. Um, just a useful way to keep track of that. So it's all, I think the key takeaway here is that it's all quite nice to have everything all in one place. So I can just drop into this document. If I ever am asking myself, okay, what do I wanna learn next? Uh, or what past papers should I do next? I can just drop in here, go to the relevant subject, see, okay, well maybe reinforcement learning this week, I still have three more things to do, but actually my other module applied machine learning, I've kind of covered most of the stuff for this week. So this was very helpful um, to enable me to decide where to put my uh, focus at any particular moment in time. And now let's go on to the second layer, which is actually the notes themselves. So let's pick a example notes. Uh, let me go with, yeah, some of this can be interesting. So, okay, applied machine learning. I had some notes on bagging. So these are obviously my finished notes on bagging, but what it would look like when I did the first pass um, is it would be, let's say, um, new lecture notes on 
bagging. So I drop in my lecture notes templates and I would then pick the, the talk. So here I have a link to exactly where the talk is located. I'll put a link here, um, link to talk.com. Uh, I would watch that and then while I'm watching through that, I'm just kind of really putting the top level things into the notes as I'm going through the course material. So maybe I'm uh, yeah, watching, watching a lecture um, and he's doing some proofs as you can see in this bagging uh, lecture we had over here. There's various different uh, formulas that are coming up and I'm just screenshotting those uh, on the Mac control shift, uh, command shift four, take a screenshot of that, drop that in here. Um, and this is something that's quite nice with Obsidian. So I can just do, for example, let's say I do uh, control shift four and I can just drag that in. And then I have this, um, the screenshot that I just took. Uh, and then, yeah, really the, the focus here is I'm just trying to get the, I'm not trying to fully have processed ma the material or understood it to com completion on the first pass, um, which is why I have these other sections here at the top. So let me go through these. So uh, within my um, template here, you can see I have summary notes. I have to do and understand, I have self-test recall questions. The reason for these is so self-test recall questions, I mean, there's good evidence that actively recalling information is much better than just looking through your notes. It's very easy to think you've studied something and, and think you've memorized it. You go and you, you look at the notes and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I've, I remember that, I understand that. But actually the best way to really test if you've remembered it and also to promote yourself remembering it long-term is to do active recall. So that's why I'll come up with these questions at the top. So does bagging help with variance or with bias? So with machine learning, you have this trade-off of bias and variance. Uh, which one does bagging help with? I mean, all this information will be contained within this note, but when I revisit this note, maybe after a week, maybe after a month, or maybe I have, uh, you know, after even a year, um, let's say in the future, then I can drop in here and I can just test my ability to remember what the answer to that question was. Um, so that's helpful. But to do and understand is what do I not yet know? So maybe I, when I do the first pass through the lecture, I write out the different kind of notes based on the lecture and I'm just passing that information. But then I realize there's maybe three or four questions that come up that I don't know the answer to yet. And I might not have the time to answer those questions exactly right now. So I'll just drop them in there. And it also, again, it's this nice little reference point where I can just drop into this note and I can see, okay, to do and understand. So I don't actually know what this is yet. If I have time, I'll kind of go through and figure out, okay, here. So we have, um, yeah, there's the mass, but I don't really understand it. So then if I have time, I will then go through and find what is the actual intuition behind the maths here. And in summary notes, self kind of self-explanatory, this is just me putting the key summary takeaway from, from what the lecture is. So in summary, my process is to start with the lecture notes, go through the material and just kind of put everything in as like a first pass, anything that's relevant, I'll just drop it into here from the lecture. I will then write my summary notes. I'll try to write these in my own words. I'll try to make these um, kind of as simple as high level and the, the kind of key takeaways. If there's anything I'm not too sure on, I'll put it in the to do and understand. And if there's any prompts that would be useful for my future self that maybe right now I'm comfortable on, but I know that I might forget in the future or I wanna make sure that it's um, kind of well ingrained in my head, then I'll put that in the self-test recall questions. So the third and final stage of this is then these high level notes that I started to build up. And I think we saw a little bit of it here. So yes, for example, this exploration versus exploitation note, this is something that I made once I'd reviewed the atomic material. So I did the introduction, I did the exploration versus exploitation lecture. I read the chapter, which also talked about this. Um, and I maybe read some of these kind of like forum questions and did all of the different aspects around uh, exploration and exploitation that was part of the course material. And then I would go through and write up in my own words, what's the summary and create this little note. And I would do these quite ad hoc, just if there was a topic that felt like I should make this kind of note for, then I would go ahead and make one. Um, but I wasn't being particularly structured or systematic about it. The point at which the kind of structured systematic nature came in was more towards the end of the year. So as I approached the third and final term of the year, I created this document, which is uh, 100 syntopical uh, machine learning notes. So what this syntopical note is, is I went through all of the different topics that were covered as part of my course, completely agnostic of which module they were covered in or where they were covered. And to do that, I went to various textbooks. So actually one example, um, so for example, I had a couple of, of textbooks. I had um, probabilistic uh, perspective to machine learning, deep learning, um, to some extent this hands-on machine learning book. And what I would do is I would look through these, I would look at the different topics and headings that they had, the way that they'd structured it. Uh, likewise in, in this book, the way that they'd structured it and build up what is the what makes sense as an overall structure on this subject ignoring the structure that my course followed and the modules that I took. And I ended up with this, which is that I have the underlying maths concepts. Um, I then have like supervised learning, non-parametric methods, um, the different kind of subtypes within those, then deep learning, etc. 
So this was my high level structure. And then within each of these topics, what makes sense? What are the different things that should go here? And then the next step is actually to find, to then match all the modules and content and, and atomic notes and those like slightly high level summary notes into these sections. So to continue the example from earlier, we looked at bagging from, uh, I think my applied machine learning lecture series, and that would come under Carton Ensemble Methods. So what I would then do is I would go through all of the course material and see in which modules was this covered, because it might be that there's a certain topic and it was covered in seven different modules. And this was true here. So there was a little bit in my introduction to machine learning module and a little bit in my applied machine learning module. And all of the things that fit under this umbrella of CART, which is classif classification and regression trees and ensemble methods were all notes that would fit into here as well as textbooks and any other notes. So this bias invariance, this is a kind of a summary, I guess a short summary note that I've made on this topic. And then these textbooks, these are like textbook notes. So actually one of them is this one that I showed, machine learning probabilistic uh, perspective is this note that I've made here. And here we can see uh, chapter 16, the relevant parts, um, adaptive basis functions. And these are just the highlights from that textbook. Uh, so all, that's all the relevant material. And I would take all of the material of the different places that I've kind of covered it and um, made some notes on atomic parts but I haven't yet brought it all together. So the, really the focus of this then kind of like top level, what I called syntopical notes, although I, I don't know if syntopical is really the best term, but these top level notes are then combining everything. So I then spend some time going through all of these, making sure I understand things, how everything fits together, what's the bigger picture and creating notes that really just condense and distill the key concepts here. Um, and so then he, these are kind of like my final notes. So I have um, a bit about decision trees, a bit about bagging, uh, random forest boosting, and you can see these notes are relatively short. I mean, yes, I'm going into some detail here, but they're not, they're not um, dense and long in the same way the original lectures would be. So I would hate when it comes to actually revising to have to go through the original lectures or any of that kind of material. I think the aim here is that I've passed most of that material. I've really condensed it down and down and down. And I've got, in my own words, the key fundamental parts of each of the different um, subjects and topics. Uh, so hopefully these notes and the knowledge that's in my head is enough and I don't really need to refer to the rest of the stuff. But if I want to, I kind of sprinkle links all throughout here um, of where the full details are. So here, gradient boosted regression tree, the maths, and I have some kind of very short um, notes here. If I wanted to, I can then go into this, which this is one of the lectures. So lecture four of this subseries, gradient boosted regression trees. I can then see these are my lecture notes um, and these are kind of all the summaries. Uh, and okay, maybe boosting is relevant so I can go back into the boosting notes. Uh, look through this here and then bagging. Okay, those are the notes we saw earlier. Um, so I really have all the reference there. I can get to it very quickly and easily. But um, this hopefully is enough. And I did find it very helpful. So when it then came around to exam revision term, um, rather than worrying about, okay, I need to cover all of my introduction to machine learning. I need to cover all of my applied machine learning. I can just go, okay, I want to cover these topics, Carton and Ensemble Methods. Okay, come into here and then I have um, sometimes I would write recall questions at the top and prompt myself. Then I have remaining questions. So, okay, what do I not yet understand and how can I try and answer those? Um, and then if I need, oh yeah, so I have the recall questions here. So these are the recall questions. I'd come in and I'll be like, okay, do I understand this question? Do I understand this question? Work through those. Um, but any that I don't, I can then uh, go down into these notes and maybe add things or um, do some further reading, etc. And then one thing I did actually find helpful when it came to doing this final sweep through the subjects is I did use uh, what my friend Ali Abdal talked about in a video um, called a retrospective revision timetable. And I'll leave a link to that video because I personally found that quite helpful. But basically what it is, is I, then you see I have all the topics that I listed in that document. I then map them into here. Um, I started by giving myself like kind of initial confidences, like an estimated confidence on this. Uh, and essentially every revision session when I have certain periods of time, I will pick up ones on here that I'm at least confident on, maybe the red ones, and then I'll review them. And based on how confident I am, I'll then re-review at different um, time frames. And you'll see that some, for example, confidence uh, intervals, I kept on reviewing it, maybe I wasn't that confident. Um, so I reviewed it more times than other subjects like metric learning, I was pretty confident quite early on. And uh, yeah, the aim is to get it to become green. So that then by the time you come around to exams, all of these should be green. And you can see like broadly, there's been a bit of a transition from like 
red, yellow, up to green in most of the subjects. Yeah, so that's, that's basically the system that I used in my master's degree. And I appreciate that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour and I tried to cover quite a, a, a large amount in this video. It's, it's somewhat of a kind of complex system that evolved over time. I hope that gave you like a bit of a gist for it and maybe was helpful in some way. Uh, let me know if there's anything that's not clear and I'm very happy to do future videos where I can go into those and explain anything that I didn't really explain well in this video. But otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.